Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Welcome to downtown Porchester. We're here at St. Peter's Church in the heart of the community uh, on CDBG Week to dedicate a brand new mobile food pantry van which uh, has been made possible by federal government money through the Community Development Block Grant Program. I'm joined here by many individuals within the Porchester community and elected officials, uh, all to be here for the dedication and the use of this van behind us, which is going to bring food to those who are in need of it, those with food insecurity, but to do it in, in the way where the, um, the opportunity to get that food comes to the neighborhood rather than the individual going to a specific set location, which can be a problem depending on where you live uh, and where those set locations are. This is a, a project uh, that has been uh, structured by Caritas of Porchester. Uh, in a few minutes you're going to hear from my friend Bill Cusano. Uh, who is the executive director of that group. My good friend Pat Hart alerted me to this uh, issue and we're happy as part of county government working together to help make these funds available. We're also going to hear from Joan Grenois Thomas who is a member of the Port Chester Village Board of Trustees. Uh, she is here uh, representing herself, her fellow trustees and the mayor Louis Marino. We have uh, legislator Nancy Barr who is also the vice chair of the Board of Legislators with us. Uh, Mike Mills, Michael Mills is the chair of the Urban uh, uh, County Council, uh, which helps to look at and evaluate some of these projects, and he has a normal assignment in Elmsford Village. And we have with us today Norma Drummond, who is our Commissioner of Planning for Westchester County. She has served in that role for uh, about five and a half years, and today is Norma's last day as Head of County Planning. And we owe a debt of gratitude to Norma that goes well beyond this immediate moment for her years of service. She's identified with the village of Port Chester over many years and members of her family here. Um, and also the CDBG program, which we recognize this week since 1986. The CDBG program was lost for a period of time to Westchester County, but we were able to get it back in 2018, 2019. And this is an example of the fruits of the benefit that we have access to federal money that can now add a program of advantage to people here in Port Chester and Ossining and in some of the other locations uh, that this is going to um, uh, serve us. I'm going to invite some of the speakers to come up and share a few words and then we'll cut a ribbon and we're going to give uh, the honor of cutting the ribbon in part to Norma for her years of service and along with folks from Caritas. But first, let me invite our Commissioner of Planning, Norma Drummond. So good afternoon. I'm actually a former resident of the village of Porchester, so this is equally exciting for me to be able to do this today. Um, but CDBG is the wonder and the great value of this program is that it the federal government lets local communities define what's important for them. It's not the federal government saying, well, all municipalities should just do sewer projects or water projects. When we say there's a, a food need in certain places, we, we're allowed to use these funds to meet that food need. So that's really the beauty of CDBG and that's one of the reasons we really need to celebrate it and remind people of the importance of this program and all of the millions of dollars that it brings to Westchester and, and the 30 mu member consortium communities um, that have joined back in with the county after uh, we did lose those funds for a number of years. So the value of CDBG goes well beyond just one van, but the, the thousands of people that will benefit from the food, um, from this program and from other vans that we've actually been able to provide is really going to be tremendous and live well beyond this year. So thank you. Thank you In government, uh, we're addicted to using acronyms and uh, the CDBG program, Community Development Block Program, is available from the federal government and the largest communities in Westchester County have their own program and allocations. City of Yonkers, City of White Plains, City of Mount Vernon, City of New Rochelle. Many of the smaller communities, though, do not have the available staff nor necessarily the time that they can devote when they're providing basic services to be able to bid for these, these uh, monies from the federal government. So uh, a number of years ago, we created a, a consortium, an urban county consortium, in which the doors open to the remaining municipalities. There were 45 communities in general uh, in Westchester County. I mentioned four cities that have their own program. There were two cities, City of Rye, City of Peekskill, that do not have their own programs, 19 towns and 20 villages, and those that wish to be part of the program, join into the consortium, we apply for the funds as a group, and then as the, uh, as the allocation is made, 
different projects are then identified and funded. Mike Mills, uh, who is, I believe, the village administrator for Elmsford, serves as a chair of our Urban uh, Council, and we'd like him to say a few words next. Mike? Thank you, County Executive. Uh, on behalf of the 30 communities that the consortium makes up, um, these are, I, I want to say, um, congratulations to Osning and um, Porchester for this very unique, I think, uh, project. Uh, I've been involved in community development block grants since uh, 1990. Um, so I've seen a lot of projects um, here in the county for some of the smaller communities. Uh, I can tell you, for, for example, with the village of Elmsford, um, there's things that we do through community development block grant that couldn't be done. Um, we improve our parks mostly, we do uh, water infrastructure, uh, but when I heard about this project here, uh, I think this is, was very unique. Um, I know it's, it's a takeoff of other mechanisms, but this is the type of thing uh, that the consortium is set up to do and to share ideas and to really help the people. This is, you know, not everybody can get to the food pantry, no, not everybody has a car, not everybody can even walk. So to provide this type of service is invaluable. Um, so everybody just remember uh, this week with Community Development Block Grant and, and do a little research on it too to see what maybe you can help your community to do a project. Thank you. Before I invite some of our elected officials to uh, comment, I want to highlight that uh, this project uh, is done through an organization based in Port Chester, residents of Port Chester, Rye, Rye Brook, uh, Greenwich are all involved in this and uh, before I bring up Bill Cassano who's the executive director uh, one of the principals is Pat Hart and Pat and I have been friends for a long time our daughters grew up together we're in elementary school and high school together we worship at the same church and when she pulled me aside and she says George I've got to tell you about something that's very important that's the kind of friendship and relationship you build on and you learn about things that you wouldn't know otherwise because of those relationships and friendships. The, the creation of this organization and, and the way to reinvent how we best deliver uh, necessary food to people with food insecurity is what has led uh, to this mobile effort. And I want uh, Bill to come up and talk a little bit about uh, how their organization is trying to meet the needs of food insecurity here in Port Chester and elsewhere as well. Bill? So this is a monumental day for us, uh, emerging from COVID after being shut out uh, for so many years. Now it seems like forever. Uh, but what's so important about what this represents is the fact that we can go anywhere. So the, the demand for food didn't stop when the virus hit. And so we managed to work with other organizations here in Port Chester to be able to get more food distributed through existing open pantry. That wasn't enough. So we started doing pop-up pantries throughout the village and that led to the idea to create a special truck that would deliver food in a dignified way reminiscent of the old village market. So that's what we look at this as. It's the village market on wheels and our goal is to, to use this to help bring communities together, to bring them out of the dark and out of their homes and get into the village square where we used to be and be able to provide food for each other. The blessing is that this is not done by one organization, this is done by many organizations. The, the funding from the county was, is a, an amazing boost for us but it allows us to reach out to other organizations who are represented here and, and who support us and support all of the organizations that are involved in the county. So this is the beginning of getting everyone to come out and to participate together, to volunteer, to help distribute food, and hopefully to get more of the supermarkets involved. Three quarters of the food that are that's on this truck right now is recovered from supermarkets. So this is donated food as well as purchased. And that's the beauty of this, is that we can all feed more people if we work together. Thank you. And we want to thank Bill for his leadership in this organization. Bill had 
very successful uh, professional career, and just when you think you're going to retire, quote, end quote, make a note, George Latimer, uh, he, his talents get brought into uh, this organization, and so we're very grateful for that, and for all of the people uh, that give uh, time over and above what they normally would do. This is the kind of involvement that makes these things work and happen. Uh, before we have a couple of people speak, I do want to recognize we're joined uh, by uh, Blanca Lopez, who is with us here. She's the Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Planning, uh, she is a Port Chester resident, former member of the uh, Port Chester Board of Education. I believe she was president of the Board of Education, but she's a, uh, uh, an important member of our executive uh, administration in the county government. <laughs> also, we're joined by Tito DeVia, who is a uh, chief aide to Senator Pete Harcum. And Pete, of course, represents Ossining, and so Tito is here. He's here to make sure the truck gets to Ossining, too. Yes, it's not just a Port Chester truck as part of that. Um, Nancy Barr represents Port Chester, Rybrook, and a portion of Harrison in the Westchester County Board of Legislators. She is the vice chair of the Board of Legislators. And none of the things that happen happen without the, the combination of support of the executive branch and the legislative branch. So on behalf of the Board of Legislators, I'd like to invite Nancy to share a few thoughts. Thank you so much. Um, you know, we deal with a lot of things that get us uh, very sad and very, uh, you know, down and we wonder how are we going to make a difference in the world, a positive difference. And then you come to an event like this and you remember that that's, that's what we are in office for. That's why the people are working on this, whether they're at the county level, at the village level, at the consortium level. Um, you know, volunteering um, at Caritas. It's, it's just, it's, it's for these moments when you realize that if, when we all come together, we can really make a difference in people's lives. So I'm, I'm just very happy and proud to be here today. And I, and I thank all of the folks who were, uh, who've taken part in this and made this come to fruition. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Joan Grenjnoir Thomas uh, to speak to us. She is a member of the Port Chester Village Board of Trustees, an elected official. Uh, previously, she was a chief aide to former Congressman Mondaire Jones. And this, these programs are projects that were done uh, during the last administration. We thank uh, Congressman uh, uh, Jones for his role in making sure this happened. Joan's uh, responsibilities with him and now in her responsibilities as a village trustee. Joan. I am so very grateful to all of the people who helped make this truck a reality. We have seen Caritas grow over the years, starting here in the kitchen of St. Peter's uh, to where they are now on Main Street, North Main Street. And, you know, it sounds trite, but it really does take a village to make these types of things happen. And I couldn't be more proud to have uh, Caritas and, and the mobile truck here in Port Chester and with our sister community of Osning. Um, I saw how hard our village came together to work to make sure that our residents were able to get access to fresh food, not just during the pandemic, but before that, and now moving into the mobile food pantry um, realm. So I am complete, totally grateful and thankful to Bill. Whatever he sets his mind to, he'll make happen. And I only see great things coming from this. So thank you very much to everyone who was integral. Thank you. Just a few comments before we cut the ribbon. Uh, this is right now, uh, as we're speaking to you, a season of faith. Our Jewish brothers and sisters are now in the last few days of celebrating the Passover season. Our Muslim brothers and sisters are still in the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, and fasting during the day and having a, a break of fast in the evenings. And for those of us, myself included, who are Christian, we've just completed uh, the major week in, in, in our um, uh, faith tradition, which leads to uh, Easter Sunday. But this is absolutely a time to quote uh, from the book of Matthew, which is sacred to uh, those of us who are Christians, in which he said, Lord, when did I see you naked or hungry or in prison or without proper clothing? And he said, whenever you did this for the least of my brothers, you did it for me. And I think it's pretty clear that we have a private commitment to charity, but we also have a public commitment to helping people uh, and, and to raise them up and to give them the chance for those basics in life. And food is certainly one of those basics. 
A child who's born to parents of modest means doesn't know the economic structure of the world at this point. They're just a young child that needs food. And we have that moral obligation from Matthew on down to be able to provide that. This day, with this vehicle and the commitment of these people, those who are in government, those who are doing this out of private philanthropy, um, to try to meet that need. And, and that's why we're here today, and it's a great opportunity for me to invite uh, all of our friends to have a piece of the ribbon as we cut the ribbon. And I'm going to ask uh, both Bill on behalf of his organization and Norma on behalf of uh, our organization to jointly cut that ribbon, and let's launch the truck. Thank you.